Hi everyone, my name is Yunke. Today I'm going to present our work, Meta Balance, Improving Multitask Recommendations. We are adapting gradient magnitudes of auxiliary tasks. This is a joint work from Facebook AI and Texas AM University. The accuracy of a personalized recommendation task can often be improved by jointly training with auxiliary tasks on the same multitask network. A typical example is that we can transfer knowledge from click-through rate CTR as the auxiliary task to conversion rate CVR as the target task. Another example is that we can transfer the user preference knowledge from social network prediction as the auxiliary task to item recommendation as the target task. In the first scenario, a CGAR paper reports that AUC of CVR could be improved from 66 to 68. In the second scenario, a KDD paper reports that the precision of item recommendation could be improved around 50%. A question arises here, why does knowledge transfer in a multitask network improve the target task? We hypothesis that auxiliary task gradients could assist the target task gradient to update the shared parameters of the multitask network, achieving better generalization ability. As shown in this figure, is the backpropagation of a multitask network we can see this is a multitask network with shared parameters and uh, two task specific layer for auxiliary task and the target task respectively. In the back propagation process, the loss will be used to calculate the gradients with respect to the parameters. And according to the chain rule, we can get the gradients of each layer, layer by layer and all the way back to the shared parameters. And before updating the, par the shared parameters, let's have a, a break here, and uh, let's have a close look at the target gradient, which is represented by this red arrow. Likewise, we get the gradient with re the auxiliary gradient with respect to the shared parameters re represented by this blue arrow. And then they will be summed together to the total gradient, which will be used to update the shell parameters. So you see in this back propagation, the auxiliary gradient will be involved in updating the shell parameters, providing more supervised learning signals to the shell parameters and achieve better generalization ability. However, this optimization process always face a challenge. One of the challenge is that the target task might be dominated by auxiliary task. As we introduced, the auxiliary and target gradients are summed to update the shared parameters. Hence, the larger the gradient is, the greater in the impact this gradient has on the shared parameters. So as shown in this figure, the x-axis shows the training epochs and the y-axis shows the gradient magnitudes. And we have target task, which is the purchase prediction. And the other three is the auxiliary tasks. And we can see that the blue curve is much higher than the red curve, which means this auxiliary gradient from click URL task is much larger than the target task gradient. Therefore, the updating of the shared parameters will be mainly dominated by the auxiliary gradient, which is obviously not optimal for the optimization of the target task, resulting in poor performance. On the other hand, auxiliary tasks might be too weak to transfer knowledge. Again, in this situation, we can see this figure here. The green curve is much lower than the red curve, which means this auxiliary task gradient is much smaller than the task gradient, which means this auxiliary gradient is too weak 
to have substantial impact on the shared parameters, which is obviously a waste of this auxiliary information. Sum up a little bit. Sometimes the target task might be dominated by auxiliary task. Some, some other times, auxiliary task might be too weak to assist the target task. What's worse, the magnitudes dynamically change throughout the training. In this figure, we can see that the curves dynamically change throughout the training. And the imbalance varying across different parts of the same multitask network. So you can see these two figures actually from the same multitask network. But you can see the pattern varies a lot. Here is the key research question in this paper. So how to flexibly and adaptively balance the knowledge transfer from auxiliary tasks to improve the target task? We propose met meta balance that has three strategies. The first strategy A is to stress the dominance of the target task. Auxiliary gradients with larger magnitudes than the target gradient will be carefully reduced. Strategy B is to enhance the knowledge transfer from weak auxiliary tasks. Auxiliary gradients with smaller magnitudes than the target gradient will be carefully enlarged. And strategy C, that is meta balance adopts both strategy A and B in the same training iteration. You may ask, which strategy we should apply for a specific task. Well, we use a data-driven solution without relying on the private knowledge. That is the best strategy is selected based on the empirical performance over the validation set of the target task. And the next important question is how to control the enlargement or the shrinking of the auxiliary gradients. Here is a simplified equation to show how it works. We design a hyperparameter relax factor R, which is between zero and one. You can see if R is zero, the auxiliary gradient will keep its original magnitude. If R is one, the auxiliary gradient will have the same magnitude as the target gradient. Again, R can be empirically selected based on the performance over the validation set of the target task. Here is the features to illustrate the impact of R. So you can see when R is zero, the blue curve auxiliary gradient is much larger than target gradient. And when we increase R to one, you can see the auxiliary gradients are shrinked to the same level as the target gradient. To sum up a little bit, meta balance benefits the target task from six aspects, strengthening the dominance of the target task, enhancing the knowledge transfer from weak auxiliary tasks, and third, the A and B could be done together in, if necessary in the same iteration. And the fourth, data-driven solution to decide the strategy and the relaxed factor, making meta balance a very flexible framework, no need to rely on priory knowledge. And the fifth, the, auto, the auxiliary gradients can be balanced dynamically throughout the training. And the sixth, the auxiliary gradients can be balanced adaptively for different subsets of the shared parameters. This is a complete version of meta balance. For more details, please refer to the paper. To evaluate, evaluate the meta balance, we conduct experiments on two public real world data sets, and we applied MLP and matrix factorization as the shared bottom layer in our experiments. As I said, this is a data-driven solution to decide the best strategy. And the experiments on the two public data sets showing that the strategy C is better than strategy A, which is better than strategy B, which means that strengthening the dominance of the target task is more important. And also we compare meta balance with 11 baselines and showing that meta balance can outperform all of them. Moreover, meta balance will not significantly increase the time and space complexity of training a multitask network. 
why does meta valence outperform previous methods? We give some intuitive explanations here. First, as I said, the magnitudes dynamically change throughout the training and vary across different parts of the network. So tuning fixed weights for the losses are obviously not optimal. So that's why meta balance outperform the weight tuning, which is the typical way to handle this imbalance in the industrial. And the second, a possible reason why meta balance outperform the general multitask balancing methods is that the, late, the former prioritize the target task, while the latter have no special preference to the target task. Thirdly, why meta balance outperform the gradient direction based method? In this method, they punish the auxiliary gradients that have dissimilar directions with the target task. And in this figure, we compare the training performance of meta balance with these methods. We can see this gradient direction based methods actually have better training performance. However, as I showed, the meta balance has a better testing performance, which means that meta balance has a better generalization ability. So the hypothesis here is that the auxiliary gradients with dissimilar directions might be useful to improve the target task generalization ability. For example, they might help the target task to correct its direction of the optimization. We leave the theoretical analysis in the future work. Moreover, meta balance is a flexible framework which can collaborate well with other popular optimizer, optimizers, including Adam, Adagrad, and RMS Pro, as shown in these two figures. With the help of meta balance, you can see these two optimizer, optimizers also have better performance. Highlights, meta balance can significantly boost the test accuracy of the target task, while the auxiliary knowledge can be better transferred to the target task. So the experiments show that our proposed method achieves a significant improvement of 8.3% in terms of NDCG improvement upon the strongest baseline. And third, compared to the the weight tuning, which is wildly applied in the industrial, only one hyperparameter in meta balance, the reflex factor, needs to be tuned, irrespective of the number of tasks. And lastly, meta balance can collaborate well with several popular optimizers, including Adam, Adagra, and RMS Pro, which shows the potential that the meta balance can be wildly applied in many scenarios. And don't remember, don't forget that. Meta balance will not significantly lower the training time of the of a multitask network. That that's all. Thank you.